Hey there, if you're looking to take your website hosting game to the next level, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into virtual private servers, VPS hosting. You've probably heard that it's a game changer for businesses or larger websites that have outgrown shared hosting, but you might also think it sounds complicated. Well, I'm here to tell you that's no longer the case. We'll still need to put in some work, but with hosting your WordPress VPS hosting and its AI integration, your very own server is closer than ever. Let's jump into this hosting your VPS tutorial. First, we need to pick the best VPS hosting plan. This might seem a little overwhelming, but don't worry. I'll break down what you should focus on. All VPS plans come with essentially the same features. The only difference is the hardware resources your server will get. Think about the type of website you're running. Is it a small blog, an e-commerce site with hundreds of products, or maybe a portfolio with lots of high-res large images? The larger your website and the more traffic you expect, the more resources you'll need. For most beginners, a mid-tier VPS plan is a great starting point. It gives you enough power to handle growth without breaking the bank. The best part about hosting your VPS is that you can easily scale up anytime you need to. So starting with the cheapest option and adapting as your site grows is a perfectly viable strategy. Even though Hostinger offers cheap VPS hosting, I've left a Hostinger coupon code in the description to save you even more. Or you can scan the QR code on the screen to grab yourself a plan. Oh, and if you're into gaming, check out our VPS for gaming tutorial by clicking right here. Once you've chosen a plan and signed up, it's time to log into your VPS. For this, you'll need something called SSH access. If you're using Windows, you can download a free tool like Putty. For Mac and Linux users, you're in luck. Your terminal is already SSH ready, so you won't need to install anything extra. Now, we need the terminal to update your server with DNF update, DNF upgrade, and then, nah, I'm joking. Don't panic, we won't be coding anything. With Hostinger, the setup is actually really simple. In your Hostinger dashboard near VPS, click setup, and you'll be guided through the VPS guide with quick onboarding. Hostinger will automatically choose a server for you based on the information you provided. However, this choice might not always be the best. For example, if you're in the USA, but your main market is in Europe, you can select from 11 data centers around the world. What I love is that you get to see the latency from your current position, which helps you make an informed decision. I'm all about that data. Data is fun. Also, something I personally love about Hostinger is that most of their data centers are powered by 100% renewable energy, a nice little bonus for the environment. Now, let's take a look at how to set up your VPS. First, select an operating system. For this WordPress VPS tutorial, I recommend choosing a pre-configured OS with CyberPanel. It's free and optimized for WordPress hosting, making it a great option for us. Hostinger offers a variety of control panels, but many of them are more advanced or designed for specific use cases. Plus, most require a premium license. Starting with something free like CyberPanel will be the best fit for our needs. One important note, if you decide to change your control panel later, you can absolutely do that. However, be aware that it will delete your website since it involves a full server reinstall. It might take a few minutes for your VPS to be ready, so grab a coffee while Hostinger works its magic in the background. Once it's done, you'll see your server's details like the IP address and root login credentials. If you need to copy any of these values, just click on them for a quick and easy copy. Super convenient. Once your VPS is ready, the next step is to log into CyberPanel. To do this, open your browser and type in your server's IP address, followed by 8090. That's the default port for CyberPanel. Use the admin credentials provided in your VPS details window. Once you're logged in, the first thing you should do is change your admin password to something strong and unique. CyberPanel will prompt you to do this during the first login, so just follow the steps provided. And hey, maybe consider using a good password manager to keep that password safe. Now, let's create a website. Click on Websites in the sidebar, then select Create Website. Fill in your domain name and choose a PHP version. As a good rule of thumb, if you don't have any specific needs for older versions, always go with the highest PHP version available. This will help ensure your site runs as fast as possible. Once you've made your selections, just click Create. CyberPanel will handle the rest. With your website set up, it's time to install WordPress. CyberPanel makes this process super easy. Go to the application installer in the sidebar and select WordPress. Fill in the required details like your admin username, password, and email address. Double check your domain name to make sure it's correct. Better safe than sorry. Then click install. 
In just a minute or two, WordPress will be installed and ready to go. Moving on in this hosting or VPS tutorial. Once WordPress is installed, you can log in by visiting yourdomain.com forward slash WP dash admin or WP dash login. Enter the username and password you just created and you'll be greeted by the WordPress dashboard. The first thing you'll want to do is pick a theme. Go to appearance and then themes. Browse through the available options or upload a premium theme if you have one. For beginners, free themes like Astra or Ocean WP are great choices. Personally, I always go with either Astra or the default theme. 2020 is still my favorite. Once your theme is activated, you can start customizing it. Now, a quick note about themes. While most are free, some come with premium versions, which means some of the cool features you see may be locked behind a paywall. But don't worry, themes are usually priced fairly. And with the premium version, you get better updates and sometimes even 24 seven support. For default themes, you can use the edit site option to access most appearance settings. If you're using Astra, you can use the customizer to tweak colors, fonts, and layouts. The great thing about Astra is that it also comes with a website builder built right in. So it's all drag and drop, no coding required. For more tutorials on how to work with WordPress, don't forget to subscribe to our channel or check out this video right here. Now that your site is live, let's talk about security. CyberPanel includes some great features like free SSL certificates to secure your website. To get started, go to the SSL section and issue a certificate for your domain. It's quick and easy. The best part is that CyberPanel gives you a free Let's Encrypt SSL certificate without you having to do much. Just make sure your domain info is correct. And once the certificate is issued, check your site again to see if the status has changed. If it doesn't show up immediately, don't worry. Sometimes it takes a few minutes for everything to update. Also, don't forget to keep both your VPS and WordPress installation updated. Regular updates are crucial to ensuring your site stays secure and runs smoothly. CyberPanel makes this super easy, as VPS updates can be managed directly from the dashboard. However, I also recommend going to the admin panel in WordPress, heading over to plugins, and ensuring that auto updates are enabled for all plugins. Okay not every single one. For smaller or lesser known plugins, I'd recommend leaving auto updates off. You don't want an update from a random developer to break your site. So let others test it before you enable it. Managing a VPS doesn't stop once your site is live. You'll need to constantly monitor performance, apply security updates and optimize settings. That's the beauty of VPS, control and freedom. But let's be honest, it can get a bit tiresome. That's where Hostinger's Kodi AI Assistant comes in as a real lifesaver. Kodi can guide you through common tasks like clearing cache, checking server load, or troubleshooting issues. All you have to do is ask. Now, I'll be real with you. It's AI, so it's not always going to be perfect. But if you're a beginner, Kodi will definitely help you out. Let's say your website starts running slow. Kodi can help pinpoint the issue, whether it's a traffic spike or a misconfigured plugin. Or let's say you encounter an error like a 500 internal server error. Just ask, what's causing this error? Kodi will suggest checking the server logs, looking into any misconfigured .ht access files or identifying problematic plugins. Again, not perfect, but if you learn to use Kodi to your advantage, your VPS will thank you for it. Before we wrap up this VPS hosting tutorial, let's tackle some common questions. When should I upgrade from shared hosting to VPS? The short answer, when your website outgrows shared hosting, whether it's in terms of traffic or functionality. I recommend upgrading when your site is generating enough revenue to support the best VPS hosting, when it starts making money. That's the sweet spot for an upgrade. What happens if I need more resources on my VPS? As I mentioned earlier, you can easily scale up your server at any time without downtime. You just need to purchase more resources, nothing to stress about. Hostinger offers up to eight virtual cores and 32 gigabytes of RAM, which should be plenty for even large projects. If you need more than that, you might want to consider upgrading to a dedicated server. Can I install custom software on a VPS? Absolutely. Unlike shared hosting, where you're often restricted in terms of software installations, a VPS gives you root access. This means you can install any custom software or applications your project requires. So go ahead and build your own WordPress setup. Customization is all yours. What happens if I mess up my VPS configuration? Mistakes happen and that's okay. 
Hostinger offers automatic snapshot backups, so if things go wrong, you can easily restore your server to a previous state. And if things get really out of hand, you can always reinstall the operating system. The great part? No one will find you or stop you from experimenting with your private server. It's all in your hands. Can I run multiple websites on a VPS hosting? Absolutely. A VPS can easily host multiple websites as long as it has the necessary resources. You can configure multiple domains and websites using free control panels like Wedmin or CyberPanel. A good rule of thumb is to allocate at least 2GB of RAM and storage space per website, but this depends on the type of projects you're working on. How do I monitor the performance of my VPS? Hostinger provides a user-friendly control panel that lets you monitor server performance, including CPU usage, memory, and disk space. If you need more advanced insights, you can use tools like Nagios or Zabbix, but keep in mind these will require some learning and setup. What's the difference between VPS and cloud hosting? This is a hot topic. Both VPS and cloud hosting offer scalability and flexibility, but the key difference lies in how resources are allocated. VPS provides a dedicated virtual environment with fixed resources, giving you more control over how things run. Cloud hosting, on the other hand, distributes resources across multiple servers, offering better reliability and scalability for dynamic workloads. Think of cloud hosting as a more advanced distributed version of shared hosting. It maximizes performance and minimizes issues. VPS, though, is more about control. It's like having your own mini dedicated server, just on a smaller scale. And there you have it, a complete-ish VPS tutorial to getting started with Hostinger. From setting up your server to hosting your website, it's not as intimidating as it seems. The key is taking it one step at a time and having a platform like Hostinger that caters to both beginners and advanced users alike. With the right tools, you'll be up and running in no time. If you have any questions or need clarification, drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and maybe even hit that notification bell for the upcoming extensive VPS tutorial. Anyway, I really hope you've managed to launch your site and now are simply enjoying all the VPS benefits. Okay, enough yapping. I'll see you all next time. Bye.